Hello, folks. With that bright moon out there, I had no choice. I went back to narrowband. Couldn't help it. But at around 12, between 12.30 and 1 a.m., the Crescent Nebula is in view for me, so I'm going back to the Crescent Nebula. Now, about eight months ago, I captured it with my SET, and I didn't think it looked that bad, but I want to see how it looks with the refractor and then compare them when I'm done. And right now, my mean readout for three-minute exposures of HA is 834. So that's pretty good. And I started this on another night. I've already got nearly four hours of data on it. I think I'm going to stop somewhere around seven or eight hours of HA and then just move on to oxygen. And um, I just use those two filters on it. And uh, let me take a look at my guiding right now. Guiding uh, 0.94. I'm pointing pretty low right now, and um, that's not so great, but I was looking at my stars, and you can see this is what one raw image looks like. Uh, the stars look pretty, pretty round, so I'm not going to worry too much about how guiding is performing, as long as the stars look okay. Sorry, I got the sniffles. I was just outside. I, I had to make a run for it. My PC, my laptop outside, powered down. The power cord into the laptop was unplugged. I didn't even know it. So I lost about 15 minutes on that little adventure. But, uh, yeah, the stars are pretty good. Good enough. So I'm not going to worry too much about the guiding. So we'll see how this turns out. I'll see you later. Okay, so I actually finished the Crescent. I can't believe I finished it this early in the year because it doesn't even come into view until 1 a.m. for me. But I did get 13 hours of data. This is my HA data stacked at 7 hours stacked and stretched. And this is my oxygen, 6 hours stacked and stretched. And I think that is probably enough for now. I could always use more, but I think I can get by with this. And after I ran the histogram, this is what the data looked like. There's my HA. And... That is my oxygen. I didn't run any background extraction on either of these. Um, and the, um, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I take that back. I actually ran a DBE and an ABE <laughs> on the oxygen on the left. But you can see it really smoothed it out from edge to edge. So what was I thinking? Of course, I always have to do a, a background extraction on oxygen. So I do anyway. I can't speak for others. It's just the way, I don't know if it's my light pollution, I always have that brightness around the edges. But um, after I combined the data, I used that uh, SHO AIP script, and I went into detail on that script uh, back on the, the monkey head video. So if you haven't seen that and you're wondering about that script, uh, I'll post a link for it up here. I use it all the time for narrowband. So you might want to check that out if you're not familiar with it. And... That's what the uh, script came up with when I combined the data. And that's what I was really looking for. Last year when I captured it with my SET, I, I didn't capture enough data and I didn't get that shell, that bluish greenish shell around it. But it looks like it's showing up here. So that was just enough for me to work with. And um, I sharpened and denoised it in uh, PixInsight and I worked on the colors more in... Um, uh, Photoshop to get that shell out. And this is what my final image looked like. So what do you think? I, I kind of like how it turned out. That's what I was looking for, that faint outer shell around it. So I got it. So that was my goal. And let me show you one more thing here. Um, this is how my SET version looked like last year, which I thought was actually pretty good. Uh, the SET is a little bit faster and it has more focal length and I sharpened it a little bit more on this one, but I just didn't collect enough data. I didn't have any of that green outer shell around it or that bluish outer shell. And um, that's why I, I decided to recapture it again, but this time I was on my refractor. And I decided to hold off on the sharpening too. I wanted more of a, a softer look this time, although some people probably prefer this one on the right. But to me, it just stopped looking natural the closer I got into it. Whereas this one, I thought it remained soft. And I don't think it really lost as much when I got closer to it. So 
I, I decided, yeah, let's just go with the, that look on the left. And uh, there's one more thing. I, I If you saw that previous video where I animated the sun's prom prominences, I finally colorized it. So I'm going to play you that the, the color version now, and then I'll show you a close-up of my crescent. And that's how I got to share, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.